What's the word, y'all? All right, I know that probably sounded completely terrible. I am in my new house, which means I'm in my new office, and the videos must go on even though the setup is not nearly close to done. It's actually at like 6%. But the desk is here. My editing station is here. The rest of these walls are completely bare, and that's why I'm holding this microphone because if I was using my normal mic, the echo would be crazy. I think the echo might already be crazy even with this mic, but we got to get the show on. I got hardwood floors for the first time ever, and I'm rolling all over the place. I got my rug here, but the audio is still bad. If you are an interior designer and have a bunch of ideas of how I can make this office amazing in mine let me know I do got my MJ thing that painting that I paid a couple racks for that's got to go up on the wall but other than that oh, I got my Derrick Rose thing back there but other than that I don't really know so let me know in the comment section man now I just got back from all-star weekend um and I was gonna put together a video of me talking about all-star and like the things that can make it better because listen I was there there was booze I, I had never I've been to three all-star games so far i've been to charlotte i've been to chicago and now this one it was the first time i ever heard a legitimate boo during a competition now players get booed all the time right if you go to a team or we're in a city where the teams hate you or the fans hate you like seth curry getting booed in cleveland makes sense he did some things <laughs> to that city but like the fact that we were in a dunk contest that people were booing dunks and and the lack of dunks and stuff is kind of wired i wanted to put together a video of my suggestions on how to get all-star better and maybe that's gonna come down the line since we ain't got no basketball at all for the next couple days uh, but instead I want to make a video about Zion because ah, it's making things a little bit tough. The last time we talked about Zion is uh, earlier in the season where he was sighted at a game and he just looked extremely overweight. Um, and then the next day he was in a jewelry shop and he looked just fine. But we made a video talking about him and what basketball means to him. It sounds weird to say, but there's a bunch of things revolving around Zion and I let it sit and the whole world let it sit because we ain't heard from Zion and his camp for a very long time. Now, All-Star Weekend, again, I'm there at the game, so I'm not watching a pregame. I'm not watching all these interviews. So I get back to the hotel on Saturday and I see something that's trending and it's, it's CJ McCollum. I'm like, yo, what's CJ McCollum up to? And I found the article in the video where CJ McCollum said, since I have been traded to the Pelicans, I have not talked to Zion Williams. I've talked to some people in his camp, but I have not talked to Zion Williams. And immediately, that was a complete red flag. And I, I posted a screenshot, I put it up on Twitter, and I've been reading through those replies. Some people saying, this is as much as on CJ than it is on Zion. And I cannot disagree more. Because in that interview, he talked about how he talked to some people within the Zion camp, which to me makes it seem like he might have reached out to Zion, but instead of getting Zion, he got Zion cousin or Zion's trainer or Zion's, you know what I'm saying? And I was just trying to explain to people that CJ McCollum is is not just a guy that gets traded to a team. He is one of the, I, I don't want to put a number on it, but he's one of the better players in the league. Remember just last year, he was he was close to being an all-star before he got injured. This season, he's been balling too. Maybe not to that extent, but he's been balling too. This is not the seventh, eighth, ninth man on the rotation that is getting traded for. This is a guy that your organization decided, hmm, he's going to help the growth of you, Zion, and the growth of Brandon Ingram. It might be that third piece to help us get back to the playoffs. This is just not a normal dude. This is this is a guy that you look to in some late games and be like, hey, take us home. And the fact that they have not talked and the bro got traded almost two weeks ago, or maybe it has been two weeks. I've been traveling all over the place, San Fran, then Cleveland, and now I'm going to New York. I've been traveling all over the place all the time, but it, it's, it means something. And when I made that tweet, I was just like, what, what is going on with Zion? And then I woke up this morning and saw the homie J.J. Redick and Stephen A. Smith talking about it as well. I wasn't the best player on any team I was on. But if there was a, a buyout possibility, if there was a trade possibility, I would always reach out to team. I, I called Ursan Ilyasova. I called Marco. I called Wes Matthews trying to get him to come to Philly. Like, this just shows a complete lack of investment in your team. Look, I was his teammate. I can describe him as a detached teammate. That, that, is, that is an accurate statement. This is just, this is basic, basic level of humanity being a teammate. Send a text to a guy when he gets traded to your team. And those words hold more weight than any talking head on TV, anybody on YouTube, because J.J. Redick is not just a dude that's going to spew out crazy things. That's why I like that he's he's doing a lot of TV stuff. But also there's a dude that shared a locker room with Zion for a season. He knows Zion better than anybody in the media right now. So the fact that he would say this is a little bit alarming. And I literally, as I'm recording this video, just got an update that says this. Malika Andrews just tweeted that Zion has reached out and the two have spoken. So CJ and Zion have finally had that conversation. And that's just, I, it's crazy that national TV and then a little bit of backlash was what was needed for these two dudes to have a conversation. This is a dude that's like, isn't CJ McCullough like the president of basketball operations because Chris Paul stepped down a little while ago? This is a guy that everybody in the league got his phone number because he's representing the league in all of these meetings. 
And it took CJ going on national TV. Now, I don't think CJ meant any harm when he went on. It, it, it didn't seem like there was malice intent, but he was just saying, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I have not talked to Zion just yet. And I never just like to be the dude talking about players being unhappy because at the end of the day, it's all speculation until Zion formally says anything. But a lot of his actions just seem like this might not be the place that he wants to be. Um, his camp came out a little while ago and it was rumored that th this is how he felt, but he was saying, no, I'm, I'm here to stay. And, and every time I talk about this, there are people in the comments section like, Kenny, um, blank player said that he wants to stay. Zion literally said this season before the season started that he would love to stay in New Orleans. He's happy to be in New Orleans, but that, that doesn't mean anything. It literally, it doesn't mean anything. Anytime a person is at a media day, especially in the early of the season, right after they get traded, they going to say what they believe is the right thing to say for the fans. You know what I'm saying? Was James Harden's first choice actually Philly? Who knows? Was, was Paul George actually a Clippers fan growing up? Who knows? They're going to say what it takes to keep people behind them. Kyrie Irving, when the season was starting in Boston, told the fans, I'm going to stay. And guess what? Kyrie Irving was on the first flight out of Boston as soon as he got it. Things change, people change, and people will say the right things to keep everything cool. Because if you were at this preseason interview, um, the media day, and, and Zion said, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be here forever. W you know how much of a pot is going to be, be, be stirred in that? So, of course, he's going to say that. Again, I'm not trying to say that Zion is the one that's trying to ask out, or, but the, these actions are kind of wild. Because the Pelicans are trying to get people to sign back up for season tickets. And, and this is something I saw a couple days ago. The WBD, Pel I don't know what that means. Pelicans just sent an email to season ticket holders about renewal for the 2022-2023 season and no mention of Zion. Led by new head coach Willie Green and players Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, CJ McCullum, Herb, oh, I'm adding Herb Jones. Herb Jones, the Pelicans are building something special across the street from Caesars Superdome. And with their best ever season ticker package now on sale, they did not mention the guy that they drafted first overall just a couple years ago. Again, this is something that people can, can see and hear and try to dissect or go deeper into it. This is about as damning as it gets. Now, this could be alarming for two different reasons, right? I was trying to look up a season ticket flyer for the Golden State Warriors for the 2019-2020 season. As you know, Klay Thompson got injured during the finals, and I was trying to figure out, are they still going to advertise Klay Thompson this season, even though they knew Klay Thompson probably would not, was not going to play? But the reason why this is different is because they've been telling us that Zion will eventually come back. And if you're trying to say the reason they don't have Zion there is because they don't know if he's going to play, uh, that's alarming for other reasons that we don't even want to talk about. The fact that bro is um, on pace on pace when it comes to the amount of games played in these first couple seasons is Greg Oden like again Greg Oden never came to the league and averaged 27 points per game and make an all-star appearance I understand that but he has not played much in his first three seasons so if you're telling me they didn't advertise bro because they don't know if you're gonna play next season it's wild because even if even if he was only gonna play half the season next year third of the season next year it's Zion Williamson we talking about this is the same organization that withheld the the um the, the news that he had foot surgery so they could get season tickets people in the seats right so even if they believe he's gonna play 10 games next season you should still advertise it because people still want to see those 10 games so what's going on with Zion what where what is going on with Zion, bro? It's unfortunate because as a, in the NBA, and I'm gonna sound like an old head here, but I promise I don't mean this in a super negative way. In the NBA, where it seems like a lot of the league plays very similarly, as far as like, hey, everybody can shoot and everybody does this. Having a guy that is like a six five six six bruiser is just different, and I love watching that. And if we about to get to the point where things are getting kind of iffy for Zion. I'm going to be pretty upset, man, because I like watching Zion play. And listen, this is coming from the same dude that in the last episode was was trying to put it on the same course as Joel Embiid, who missed a ton of time in his first couple seasons. But it wasn't like a bunch of malarkey involved in it. You know what I'm saying? The 76ers didn't trade for a top 50-ish player in the league, and Joel Embiid didn't give him a call. Joel Embiid wasn't completely detached from the organization on a different side of the country rehabbing. At least as far as I remember. I don't know. It was a couple years ago. Can you believe that Joel Embiid has been an all-star starter for half a decade now? Isn't that crazy to say? It don't even feel like Joel has been dominating that long, but time flies. And then we're going to have, if if this does happen, where down the line in the next year or so, Zion decides to one out or he doesn't pick up that rookie extension, the, the NBA is going to have extreme conversations and there's going to be a lot of backlash around it because how was a team like the Pelicans, the small market team in the league, supposed to build an organization 
Because no, the, the Pelicans are not shooting 100% on draft picks or trades or this or that. But I think that they've been doing an okay job since Zion has been there. And the fact that he might not want to be there still is alarming for the other small market teams across the league. If Zion decides to turn down that rookie extension and go to a big market team, it is the NBA is going to have to change some things. And it's going <laughs> to how, how dramatic do you want me to be? It's going to cause an NBA lockout. Shit, I said it. It's, it might cause an NBA lockout. Because how is a small market team supposed to build like this? They made the trade for Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, blank, 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 blank. Got a ton of first round picks because they had an unhappy guy and Anthony Davis. And yes, Anthony Davis went on to win a championship. But this looks like a trade that was beneficial for both teams because they still got a lot of draft capital. They still have a young core and they're still on the fringe of making a play in even without Zion being there. They get the first overall pick and they draft well. And Zion and Brandon Ingram in the minutes they, they have played together have looked decent. And now they're telling the world, hey, Zion going to come back eventually. We going to buy in because we got a million first round picks in the Anthony Davis trade. We got a million first round picks in the Drew Holiday trade. So we're okay with giving up some of those picks because though CJ is 31 years old or whatever, we believe he could be a piece to help us grow to make that playoff because our, our organization, our fans have been missing the playoffs for the last couple of years. They hit on some draft picks. Herb Jones is like an absolute stud. I don't even, was he undrafted? Regardless, they got a guy out of nowhere that's an absolute stud. And you can look at the Lonzo Ball walking and this and that and, and say that that was a mistake and it might have been, but other than that, that they've been pretty solid. The Jonas Valanciunas trade for them has been a W. They have a core there, and the fact that their number one player, their star player, the 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 demigod, the generational talent that people are saying might not want to be there or might not be healthy enough to play enough games in his first four seasons, is it, bad for the entire league. Let's be honest. And it's a couple days ago, a guy that I genuinely respect when it comes to this sports stuff. I met Howard Beck. It's a cool dude. He followed me back on Twitter. I didn't even ask for it. I didn't say, hey, follow me on Twitter. He followed me back on Twitter. Um, and this was in his in his article from Sports Illustrated. Teams are bracing for a potential Zion Williamson, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell trade demands because they believe that those might be the next three stars that request out. We know Damian Lillard not about to do it, so it's up to it's up to Zion and, and, and Donovan Mitchell. And the Donovan Mitchell thing is something we can talk about in the next couple of days since we ain't got no basketball to talk about, about his backhanded compliments or backhanded, backhanded comments between him and Rudy Gobert, yada, yada, yada. Zion Williamson looks like, out of these options, the most realistic one. And it's not a great thing. I'm very far away from calling Zion a bust like I've been seeing crazy on Twitter. I don't, I don't think that is the case. I, I think he might be an unhappy guy in a market that he doesn't want to play in. Which, again, like I said, is, is not the best of things, but that's the case. It, it would take a lot more for me to consider someone a bust. Because I feel like in the NBA world, or just sports world in general, that word gets thrown around so early and it gets thrown around so often that it's lost its value. Um, Zion Williams is a dude that averaged 27 points per game. And when he does play the game of basketball, he is elite. It's about getting him there. And I'm not willing to say that he won't get back there after him missing or he played 85 games in his first three seasons. I'm not there just yet. I need to see more before I start throwing that label around on players. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about this whole Zion situation. I literally have no idea. Let me know again what I can do for my room. Cause right now it looks kind of weird, even with this lighting. This room is not red like my last room. This is a normally colored room, but I have my lights back here because y'all are used to the color red. So I just put it back on. Do y'all need the color red anymore? I, I don't really know. You feel me? Shout out to MJ. I was in the same building as Michael Jordan again. That is a the third time in three years, ladies and gentlemen. I'm close to, okay, I'm not close to meeting him, but I was in his presence. I was in the presence of majority of the NBA 75. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy to even say. I was in the same building as them. I, I, I don't know. The energy on Sunday was crazy. And I think I will talk about more about All-Star in the next video because there's a lot of stuff to happen. Um, this was actually one thing that happened, right? Talking about the CJ thing. But anyway, if you enjoyed it, leave it a like, and uh, I'll see y'all soon.